Hey everyone, it's Nick and Walker at Full Spectrum Laser and welcome to Laser Talk Live. That's right, we're here at Full Spectrum Laser. It's Wednesday, it's 4 o'clock, so you know what that means? Time it's time for lasers. Yeah, so uh, this week we actually have a pretty awesome show. I think I have a script back here yeah, someplace. We're, we're talking There's toys. Toys! Yeah. We have a toy story of a day of a show here. Um, toys have a lot. I mean, there's so many different things you can do with toys, right? So many. I'm excited. You're pretty excited. What's your favorite laser cut toy? Oh, there's so many good ones. I like the atomic bits. The, the ones that move, move around. And gears and all that stuff. So. What was your favorite toy as a kid? Well, as a kid, I always played with animals. Animals? Yeah, yeah. I liked animals a lot. Like uh, live live animals? Yeah, or? yeah, yeah. I, I didn't really, like, I wasn't a toy guy, huge toy guy. So I like dinosaur toys. Dinosaur toys. Yeah. Dinosaur toys and live animals. Yeah. Have you ever wondered what it's like <laughs> to grow up on the outskirts of a small Las Vegas suburb? Yeah. That's, uh... That's what it is. Yep. Weird outcome. <laughs> Weird outcome. Uh, no, I'd, uh, we had uh, pets growing up too, so we always had the dog was always in play when yeah, we yeah, were playing. Yeah. So like whether well, we were outside running around in the woods. Really, he's your favorite toy. Absolutely. I mean, later. he's the best accessory to <laughs> any situation yeah, I'm going yeah. on. So if you're playing tag, running through the woods, oh like yeah. we were big, uh, like going out in the woods and like building forts. Oh yeah. And like, like that sure. was like our thing, like to go back and just build a new fort. And then the dog would always come with that. Yeah, now kids just play video games. All day, I don't know. They never get outside. I don't get it. So um, sad. But with these toys you can make with the laser, like uh, I think the cool thing is not only can you personalize toys, but you can make toys that are one of a kind just for that kid, right? Yeah, yeah, just for that kid. Or like this week's project is uh, Barrel Full of Monkeys. Barrel Full of Monkeys. Let's see what you got Blast. here. So we got a... Uh, oh, geez. That, can we get a close-up on this on the little cam? We got some Walker monkeys here. I don't know if anybody can see this, but... What is this? Yeah, it, so we got a barrel full of monkeys. We got a barrel full of walker monkeys. That's pretty I mean, funny. There's normal monkeys in there too. Oh, you got some normal monkeys. Yeah. Okay, well, that's pretty cool. So they're gonna show you how to do a barrel full of your favorite kind of people this week. So uh, Walker will be uh, talking with you Friday uh, with that. Show you how to do a barrel of monkeys and even how to personalize it with uh, your own picture. I, I figured like a barrel full of daddies for like little kids would be hilarious. Hilarious or even funnier, like you can imagine if a grandmother had like 20 every grandkids one. and yeah. they put every grandkid in the barrel full of monkeys. That'd be like cool. what a fun gift for a grandma. That'd be, r yeah, and you could like just give that to everybody in the family. Absolutely, and uh, I'm talking about an easy Christmas gift where like let's say you had the same 12 or 20 people come together for Christmas every year. What a fun gift to kind of make and have as yeah. a uh, and hand. Yeah, every year you can add like a little baby one. Oh, you got the little babies, yeah, yeah. every year, yeah, absolutely. Um, so because every, I mean, you add to the family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Little, little blank baby ones. Oh, yeah, there you go. Uh, so um, I think the first thing we should do maybe is maybe go through some of the examples uh, that we have uh, hey. for toys, right? Well, do we, yeah, yeah, I think we have some in front of us, right? Like, yeah. if you remember, um, we have, if we go to the handheld here, we d we did a show with you guys uh, a, a few, um, I guess it was maybe a couple months ago, where we had these little guys here where we did personalized um, game pieces. Um, so as you can see, he did a lifelike representation of me here, uh, yeah. <laughs> and then... You did a very lifelike, <laughs> very <laughs> lifelike <laughs> representation of you there, and then uh, this cool one here. Looks like we'd have to zoom the size a little bit, Charles. Um, we but we also have uh, remember Ruben, uh, the two-headed monster there with you and Ruben, uh, R.I.P. But then <laughs> we also have this uh, laser-cut uh, chess set, which is available as a free project. Looks like we just have a little bit of a zoom issue that Charles is uh, figuring out. But then uh, this really cool um, helicopter we have here too, right? Yeah, helicopter. We got And then this is a great one too here. This uh, those are all the neurons in your brain, all the little all the little guys. every single one. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty accurate for your yeah, brain. That's, about 10. that's probably that's is exactly good. the number of <laughs> neurons you have in your brain. I'd say. Uh, but then you made this uh, really cool helicopter here too, right? Yeah, yeah. this is actually a free project online. Oh, oh, so this is one of the free ones you can uh, download not on our website, but no, one no, of the uh, just on Google. Absolutely. Google. Um, so with these, um, I mean, those are uh, great examples of projects, but you can even do simple ones like you have in your hand there, right? Yeah. So uh, with cardboard, you can really quickly make a ball and bowling pins yeah. for a quick bowling game. This, is, this feels very familiar, putting, holding this. Uh, does it? Yeah. yeah, like you've done it before yeah. in a show. Looks like we have some people tuning in. Uh, Jared Nickel, uh, how's it going? Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, looks like we have a question. I can totally make this a unit for my high school design class. Awesome. 
absolutely can. That's probably one of the best part about the free projects. You can take a lot of the assets in Laser 101, whether it is a laser certification course, a laser safety course, or one of the free projects and translate it directly into curriculum. Uh, we actually have a great um, uh, web page dedicated to the EDU benefits of it. Uh, we'll put that link uh, down below in the comments if, uh, Scott, you wouldn't mind commenting our, our EDU uh, landing page. Yeah, we were actually talking about the barrel monkeys. Could it be a good thing to show chains of molecules? Oh, absolutely. So chemical bonds and stuff to represent, you know, just physically represent it. It's a lot easier for the kids to understand. It. Absolutely, especially with uh, electron uh, bonds with uh, molecular chemistry. It's one of the most difficult things to understand the positive and uh, negative energies from the nucleus to outer um, orbiting electrons. Seeing a physical representation of that really does help kids understand uh, the structure of molecules, um, at least the best we can, um, you know. Yeah, yeah, it'd be cool if we just did circles with notches that you could totally build. And then you can uh, put those circles different colors yeah, and yeah. build on that, absolutely. Um, but it looks like uh, Walker's actually uh, put together a handful of great examples of some laser cut toys uh, that we have to go through. Yeah, let's go through those. These are my favorites. So. You found this one. This one's a stacked uh, simple car. Yeah, this one reminded me of the Soapbox Derby. Uh, reminded me of like a Soapbox Derby type thing. Got real like a simple. Batman look, but real, very, very real Batman. dynamic. My Soapbox Derby car always looked like a Batman car. Yeah, yeah. Like I always went for I that bat thought look. it was like the fastest thing ever. Yeah. Uh, not the case at all. Uh, this one I liked a lot. Um, this one shows really good use of uh, notching, right? Like boxes. Very clean notching. I, I like the different angles and notching, and that's <laughs> sometimes hard for people to understand how to make. Absolutely. I think this is a great representation of how 2D planes can make very interesting and dynamic 3D shapes. Yeah, that's obviously like a little backhoe. That's yeah. cool. Um, is that called a front end loader? I thought uh, that's a bobcat. That's right? a, a little backhoe. I think bobcat's the brand. Yeah, yeah. Front I don't know. Loader. Probably the wrong people to be. <laughs> this one is amazing. <coughs> yeah, I love this one. This is an actual kit that you can buy, and it has a little uh, motor in it. And then what they do is put paper, this special paper, over the wings, and it's extremely light, and they actually fly these things. They use parchment paper, right, on the wings? Yeah, there? yeah. yeah. And what's so awesome is that if you crash it, uh, you can just will, laser cut the wings. Yeah, and it will be exploded into a million pieces. Yeah, so I'd say that probably would not survive a drone crash. A single yeah. tap, really. Yeah, the <laughs> um, what I thought was great about that was the little guns on top, the little yeah, atomic yeah. guns, yeah. This one is probably, I think we have a video of this too, don't we? We do, and we'll see it soon. This is from U Gears. Now, they make amazing, we'll see you later. Just, uh, I can't even say enough about it. It's Absolutely, if this photo impresses you, I mean, the video the is just good. The video is just going to... Absolutely. Then these little guys, this is a great one because it uses multi, medium, and easy stacks. Now, uh, if someone was trying to make this, how would they go about it? So I would, I would break this up into a stack. I would honestly start with just a two-dimensional little guy, and then I would break the pieces up that you want to stack, and then you can always add little notches in there to actually make them articulate a bit. Absolutely. I love how they've used the mixed medium of acrylics here to give a little bit of a... You know, dynamic on the hands and then the, uh, yeah, the like glasses. Yeah, guy's like wearing <coughs> visor and his yeah. helmet's like a tiger head. That That's very cool. cool. And this one's a great plan uh, that is a uh, carousel that just kind of spins around. And then I think we have another picture um, if we go on to the next one, Charles. Yeah, this is, I think, one of the best ones for um, young kids. Yeah, it's good for little kids. Uh, I used to have like a almost <coughs> a three-dimensional one of these where you put the bricks in. Absolutely, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, it, for little kids, it's really good. Ooh, then we, I think we have a video of this one as well, don't we? We do. This is the marble machine. People have been making uh, laser cut marble machines a lot lately, yeah. and they are awesome. Yeah, this is from a company called Marvelocity, right? Yeah. Yeah. And what's cool about those kits is they fit together. Yeah. They can add on. And then uh, these, you've actually, uh, this is a guy who made these automatons and then is now selling kits, right? Yeah, so this is a guy named Keith Newstead. I reached out to him about four years ago, and he was making automaton by hand carving wood. And somebody contacted him saying, hey, I want to take your automata and make kits. Oh, wow. And now he sells tons of kits. And he, they make them for him. He just helped design it. And they're amazing. And we have a video of that as well. Oh, cool. We'll check that out. Uh, looks like we have uh, Kate Martsteller, uh, Martsteller La Rosa. Uh, checking in. Uh, nice to see you, Katie. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, Scott, so thanks for leaving the comment there for the EDU. Um, uh, my kids would uh, love these. Oh, Katie, I yeah. promise your kids would love these. Uh, this is actually another great one here that was laser cut. And this is uh, uh, this completely moves, right? Completely autonomous. Yeah, yeah. Like you can so see in the elbows, they're uh, motors, right? They're little servos, yeah. And yeah. you can actually control those and make these <coughs> robots fight. And you can customize the bodies. These were huge in Japan um, a while back. And they'll fight. 
You know, you can program them to fight, and like whoever is still standing at the end of the fight wins. What's great about these battle bots is if you laser cut the pieces, uh, it doesn't really matter if you've lost. You can just quickly reprint the no. uh, pieces. Yeah. Yeah, and then if you like <coughs> want to change his head, make it cool. Like yeah. Instant. Yeah. And then, uh, <coughs> yeah, th I think this one's great because um, even if you let's say your kid's favorite show is Toy Story. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> Why not make something personalized that's just for him? Mm -hmm. uh, pull a couple things offline and uh, make a one-off uh, for your. Yeah, that's a music box, right? Yeah, this is uh, actually uh, it is a music box. So this, um, the they just got the music box kit offline. It looks like, and then use the, um, you know, I'm assuming they stole those images from Google um, Images, whatever, and then yeah. just cut them out. But you know, like I said, if you're not selling these, you're just if you're making something uh, your for your, for your kid, yeah, uh, you're not breaking any laws. No, uh, if anything, he's not going to come after uh, you for that. No, if anything, uh, I promise those big companies encourage things like that. They love fanfare. They love fans who, yeah, you know, yeah. love their products enough to make. Obviously, just they don't still make money off them. Yeah, yeah. 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 Just imagine like uh, your little boy and you edit him to be held by Buzz Lightyear, like he's. Oh, are like you kidding Woody me? Yeah, we're like your kid's face is on Woody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that'd be incredible. Yeah. Freak. And then uh, looks like we have a couple of these. Oh, this is a great one here too. The uh, helicopter. Simple helicopter. Yeah. yeah, I love those. Yeah, and this one it seems like it has a really simple design, but really it looks so complex. Yeah, yeah, it's it's very simple, and it's it's so weird how like simple two dimensionals go together, and then. You know what I bet you could do there? I bet you could leave the notches on the uh, the blades loose mm -hmm. and lay them a little flat. Like, yeah, like give them a little pitch. A little bigger. Yeah, that would be that would cool. be really cool. Uh, and then uh, I think we got a couple of videos of some of those yeah, uh, running, yeah, I'm don't excited we? Excited for the videos. <coughs> Now this is just incredible here. Um, yeah, this incredible. is one of the ones from the guy you reached out to, right? Yeah, this is the Keith Newstead design. You can check them out at perpetualmobile.com, uh, yeah, right? Yeah. That is the company that sells them now. But this is an automata, simple automata. And back in the day, automata were made by clock makers. And now it's more popular to be made out of wood and stuff like that. <coughs> you made an automaton like this, didn't you? I did. Do you have a video of that? Yeah, we did. Yeah. Thanks. So I took his base design, and we were doing a Red Bull competition, so I did the Red Bull that gives you wings. I see what you did there. Yeah. You put wings on a bull, and yeah. it, ah! Red Bull, yeah. Uh, this was for a great uh, event we were involved in in Detroit a couple of years ago, right, uh, called the Red Bull Design Challenge. Yeah, yeah. And uh, this video got such little play, I was like so excited for that. And it, we actually gave it away to somebody who won. Oh, really? Yeah, so I wanted it so bad. We'll have to make another one of these yeah, for the yeah. lobby. Um, the video looks great, too. I can't believe the video didn't get more play. Yeah, this I looks know. Such, so good. I, I wanted to make a huge one. Just imagine that, like, four feet high. Oh, it'll be great. Uh, we got a video of that, uh, the Roadster, too, don't you? Yeah, we do. Yeah. This thing is incredibly impressive. So, as far as attention to detail and making a toy, this... I mean, we're on everything else is on Mars. Yeah. Like, this is not even in the same... This is literal German engineering. Like, this company is from Germany. I mean, look at that. I was part of the, the piston firing. Um, that all runs on rubber bands. I mean, the thing that has to be flower compartment in the back right here. This yeah. is terrific. Are you kidding me? Just, just all that little detail. Yeah, that's that is terrific. I love the uh, the seat too. They use the living hinges to fit around side. <laughs> <laughs> the spokes too. The oh, hundred spokes. Yeah. Oh, the engine all right. That's amazing. Now this is another automaton. Uh, now I know the beginning of this video takes a little bit to get to it, but when he when he gets to the top, it really pays off. Yeah, this is really beautiful part. Even though you want to see the top. Yeah. The, Absolutely, this engineering marvel watching, and really all it is, it's just a uh, half-inch dowel with different sized circles placed with the dowel circle in different areas so that those pinnings all rise in different spots. So a lot of this is the laser cutting, but most of this is the assembly of those yeah, spots, yeah. right? And then here's what it does at top. Now this is incredible. It's off of water, right? Yeah. That's mesmerizing. So I think we're going to have to make one of those because I think I can see how to do that. Yeah, that'll be fun. Yeah, I can watch that all day. That's such a good, uh, such a good project. Um, so I 
think that's the only uh, video we have for um, uh, Adapt, Create, Deliver. That's a great uh, line for... Um, uh, who's that designer that made this? Um, is that the end? At the dent, uh, didn't pull it off there. Uh, we will mention that down in the comments, though. Uh, but mm -hmm. those are some of the toy examples that. Did we just blast through all of those? I think we did. I think oh we just man. saw all of them. Uh, I enjoyed all of them. Yeah, absolutely. Those toy examples. Um, oh, I think we have the Marvel one, don't we? Oh, I'm so sorry about that, Charles. Yeah, we do have the. Probably the. If it's not the best, it's one of the best. Uh, this is from uh, Marvel Austin. Uh, and as you see, this is basically a roller coaster from Marvel. So as it makes it down to the bottom, it automatically brings the Marvel back up to the top. customer of ours that has really taken this uh, to another level for uh, earning because uh, these these toys and kits really are big money makers. A lot they of people are. make uh, great money and we've mentioned them a few times on the show but um, in San Jose, California there's a company called Steamy Tech. Now these guys uh, started out with one of our fifth gen hobby lasers and now they have a fleet of uh, hobby lasers and a dual head laser actually in their shop. Um, Greg uh, is well, one, if you've ever been to a Maker Fair, uh, Renaissance Fair, Pirate Fair, have you ever seen the gentleman uh, with the big top hat with all the gears on the inside? Yeah. That is Mr. Greg Price. Now, um, him and his wife, they do really just incredible work. Here they are right here. Now, if you ever see these guys walking around with their hats on at Maker Fairs, please go say hi to these sweet and wonderful individuals because they are just a big barrel of joy. And uh, they will talk about laser cutting and gears all day. Now, they sell these kits that you see right here where they will laser cut uh, the parts of their um, really cooled geared materials. And they sell these online. And uh, I believe some Barnes & Noble bookstores have picked and them up as well. Amazon and as well. Amazon, which is the big one, like yeah, has yeah. picked them up. And they're available now for sale on Amazon. Now they do another really cool um, profit, uh, I guess, um, uh, play with this as well, where they do uh, uh, subscription boxes. Yeah. So you can subscribe and every two months you get a box delivered to your home full of laser cut parts to put together and make a uh, project. I know, Th they do tons of tons of cool stuff <coughs> if we want to grab the uh, cam. Yeah. yeah, so on the small cam here. Um, it's off, mic died. Looks like we had a mic die. We'll play it in the middle. Better now? Better? Better? All right. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll go here to this uh, handheld uh, and we'll talk and uh, we'll and share. And you said it's good oh, now. Oh, we're good now? Yeah. Okay. So if we're looking on the handheld, if we make, make that the big screen, Charles, uh, so we can see a little bit better and not uh, watch me fumble with them. Like, this is one of their... Um, uh, what this is a coaster kit, right? Coaster kit for a... Uh, what kind of gear is this, though? This is a... Um, Planetary gear. planetary gear. That's what I was looking so for. So that's a double layered planetary gear, which is really cool. That is really cool. Now, um, this planetary gear, they sell this kit on their uh, website, so you'd get all the pieces, hardware, and even the cool little uh, feet that go on the bottom um, to make. And then one of their, I guess, staples is this really cool wooden fidget spinner. Now, this thing is just impressive. Spins really easy. The looks really cool. Are awesome, and you can see right through it. Look yeah, at that. it's just. A really high quality fidget spinner. Um, now, the place where I think it's the most impressive for um, Steamy Tech is when you go to trade shows, these guys clean up. And when I mean clean up, I mean these guys are making tons of money. Tons of money. I don't, I don't want to speculate, but they are always selling out other stuff. So, yeah, how much is this guy? Um, on their website, I feel like that's like 35 or 40 bucks. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, it's, don't quote me on that. Uh, check out their uh, website, steamytech.com, to check out prices. But most of their items are 35 or 40 dollars for smaller items. And like most people, like we see laser cut stuff all the time, so we're kind of like, uh, I can make that. But yeah. most people see this and go, Oh, they geek out right away. So um, they're at all West Coast Maker Fairs for the most part, but they're always at the Bay Area Maker Fair. They're right there in San Jose. If you see a big wall of gears, it's probably them wander over and check out one of their sets. I mean, yeah. they've really, 
I don't want to say they have an equation because they're probably not trying to share that equation too much. They really have a formula worked out on how to make money using lasers. Now, the other thing they do at their uh, shop, which I think is really cool, is they do a maker night. So since they have a handful of lasers in their shop, they host monthly maker nights at their shop and they have people come over and they teach them how to use a laser. They let them use a the laser. They have some pre-cut things and they use basically mostly their scraps from their other things and they open, uh, they basically have, it's, I think it's a free class where they have yeah. people come in and they just teach them about using lasers and having the stuff. Now it's a great community builder, but I also know that they could charge for that very simply. So if you wanted to do like, you've seen wine nights where people come in and the guy provides a, you know, the canvas, he provides the, you know, six shades of color you need and like 12 bottles of wine and everyone just has a couple glasses of wine, they paint a canvas all the same and everyone leaves a couple hours later with a painting in their hand and, you know, a couple bottles of wine in their system. Um, I'm not suggesting you do the wine bottles. thing. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> like, uh, that's how good of a drinker I am. I don't even know what that means. The, couple um, bottles. <laughs> So did you drink, Mike? You a bottle or two at a time? No? Mike's off again. <laughs> All right. All right, well, we'll just have to do one of these and kind of wrap it up here. Um, right. Looks like we have a couple hellos coming in from Facebook, though. Jeanette, Jeanette. Uh, checking in again. How's and it going, John. Jeanette? And John. Watching on the road. Hey, Ooh. drive safely. Yeah, be careful, John. Don't want to don't crash. Um, but we do have a, um, a pretty awesome winner this week for our weekly we contest, do. don't we? We're going to check that out real quick. Dun -dun 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 -dun. Check out this Brittany Proto of all... Oh, uh, sorry, a light designs. Uh, check out this great design. Are you ready? Woo! Yeah! Congratulations on this one. Um, I mean, this is just a great project. This is a dual layer um, design, basically uh, stained back layer, and then uh, cut out the small layers on top and placed it uh, delicately. This is just a great look. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, very busy work, it, putting those pieces on there. Oh, delicate, know. absolutely. Uh, delicate. A lot of attention to that. So congratulations uh, to Brittany of Alight Designs. You've won a $250 uh, gift certificate towards Full Spectrum Laser or a free lens kit uh, to make even more uh, accurate uh, engravings with your laser. I suggest looking at that 1.5-inch lens and doing some cool engravings. That's always a good one. Looks like we have a couple questions coming in uh, from uh, Facebook. Uh, oh, looks here we go. Uh, Brittany's actually asking, uh, what started as art projects for our son's nursery has turned into home decor, personalized gifts, and customizable wedding pieces. What a great quote from our uh, weekly contest winner, Brittany. Uh, so Brittany brought the laser and she just started to make art projects for uh, her son's nursery and other such things. Now she makes home decor, personalized gifts, and customizable wedding pieces. So uh, thanks so much, Brittany, for uh, the quote and submitting to the contest. Uh, so Nick Marshall on Facebook says, hey, are you guys coming to Mini Maker Fair in Salt Lake? Uh, so, Nick, we don't usually make it out to Mini Maker Fairs, uh, uh, let alone uh, ones up in Utah. We might make the Mini Maker Fair in San Diego this year. Uh, that's still up in the air, though. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah, I wish I mean, we went to all. I, of I wish we go to every maker fair. It's just uh, you know, it's there's a lot of mini maker fairs. They have basically a mini maker fair or two every weekend. You know, all summer yeah, long. Everywhere. Yeah. Uh, looks like we have one uh, question coming in from Ohio. Um, what laser cutter would be best for engraving brick? And do you have any tips to, uh, to get the best uh, example? So, I'm actually mm. going to grab a brick right here. We have one. I guess we got. We'll do it. All right. Go to the small cam, Charles. <coughs> so we have a brick here, and that's just a basic brick. That's not specially. Nope, this is just a brick that you'd get from, uh, I think it's from Home Depot. Okay. So that's not a huge contrast. They actually have laser cut bricks, right? Yeah, they, uh, they're especially made. They can get from Romark mm -hmm. and Johnson Plastics. But this is just giving an embellishment to that top smooth layer of brick. Yeah, so it's just removing that smooth layer to the dents. It's really scratching it. Yeah, yeah, yeah scratching it um and it looks still really clean i love how it's subtle but it looks good absolutely this is a great addition so if you're going to put a uh, cornerstone or you're going to put just a small accent to a kitchen um, um you know personal space like i love seeing these personalized tiles in the uh, background at uh in like she sheds and uh, uh what do you call the uh, the man cave like a man cave yeah, like yeah. a like a like oh your bar yeah. in your basement like oh yeah, yeah. yeah they got like their favorite teams in the backgrounds and things like that so the boy bungalow yeah the boy bungalow the uh <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty funny the uh what do you call it? these bricks actually uh, i love the look of the brick engraving like i said a little subtle but like you said when it catches the light like that especially it's like oh yeah absolutely it definitely has a uh, some depth to it but yeah, and engraving brick uh really high quality actually we did uh granite is essentially doing the same thing like yeah, yeah removing that top polish coat and you could always uh 
mask that off and paint the uh, output as well. Absolutely. Um, masking uh, with the paint on the, uh, the brick is probably the best way to get the dark uh, contrast. Yeah, yeah. If you want that high, high contrast, that's really good. Looks like we have one more question coming in uh, from Ramon in St. Augustine, Florida. Is there any alternative to using thermal paper when doing a laser alignment test? So you can always use receipts. Receipts are thermal paper. All receipts? Most receipts, unless you feel it and it's like just basic paper, like right. a cheap receipt. Mm -hmm. If it's got that sheen to it, mm -hmm. it is thermal paper and you can use that. Usually I use tape and then I'll put the, uh, the receipt on there. You can do that. Um, I always suggest CVS because seven CVS uh, receipts will get you to the moon. So. Yeah, it's, uh, CVS receipts just about, like one of those will last you basically forever, forever. with, with uh, your laser testing. I actually prefer to use the thermal paper receipts uh, when doing the laser testing. I actually just aligned my laser last night, and to avoid putting the sticky uh, thermal paper on my mirror, I used a receipt and used just a little bit of tape on the edges and kept it over top of the mirror. And uh, I did blast through it at one point, but yeah, yeah. Uh, not a big that deal. Happens. Yeah, it, it's, that's a normal thing. I mean, all it did is hit the mirror behind it. And then when that happens, you're like, yeah, my laser's good. Laser's uh, on point. And I'll be honest mm -hmm. with you, I was getting about, I think I was clipping about a third of my beam. Really? Um, yeah, um, my laser performed incredibly well last night. Like I thought it was, I mean, it was always performing pretty well, but like three millimeter birch, I was cutting at like 33 speed. Now it was 30. Yeah, like 25. Oh no, I mean like uh, now last night after the alignment, I was at 35 speed. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I'm, I mean, cutting it smooth. Uh, and then the three millimeter acrylic, I was at like, I could have probably done it at 40. Like I felt like at 35, it was making almost too easy of work. So alignment nice. can make a big difference. Um, <laughs> even someone like, I don't say like, I use my Muse almost every day and you tend not to notice when it slowly goes out of alignment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you notice it like when it's like that, you know, oh, something needs to be done here. Mm -hmm. But when it slowly goes out of alignment, you don't really notice. I do a lot of a, a rastering, which shakes the laser a lot. That back little bit forth. of shaking just is enough to, you know, have to get it back in line. Uh, we got one more question coming in from New Mexico, it looks like. Uh, <coughs> all right, here's a hard one for you, Walker. Um, what is the best way to design gears to ensure that they intersect together so that they work properly? I guess they were looking at this uh, planetary. That's a great question. Yeah. So when it comes to designing gears, you always want, and especially something with so many moving parts, you want to keep in mind the kerf of the actual laser cut, the friction of the gears, and how they're all going to come together when it comes to like, to see this uh, almost like a propeller? That's a cross-section brace. So that bracket is actually what holds everything in place. And you can see those, the hardware uh, goes through the gears so they can move. And all of that is in play. You want to know your thickness of your material, the thickness of the hardware you're using, because you don't want play on those uh, spindles of the actual gears. Right. And then uh, there's some software you can help uh, in creating it, right? Yeah. So there's a uh, basic software like Inkscape has a gear generator, a, a gear, gear, a gear a generator. You don't need gears out there. <laughs> you want to what is a gear? Walker will mm. share a, a gear generator. And uh, then there's actual softwares you can purchase. And then there's free online browser uh, softwares that you punch in your ratios for the gears. And then it just makes it for you. Absolutely. Now, uh, w those automatic creators are great uh, for making the design. And I think they account for a lot of things, not only like uh, gears matching together, but also yeah. pitch and uh, rotation, right? Yeah, pitch, teeth, numbers, all that. It will automatically generate. But a lot of the times we were talking earlier about that bracket that holds everything together is yours to create. Absolutely. And it looks like Jenna just uh, commented the uh, gear generator down below in the awesome. uh, comments, though. Thank you, Jenna. I think that's all the questions we have coming in from Facebook. Um, uh, again, congratulations to Brittany on the weekly contest winner. That was a great, uh, great project. Um, yeah, I can't wait till we fix the mic. Yeah. Um, We'll have to go into <coughs> the lab and do some soldering today. I think it's all it's yeah. going to take. Um, but once again, we always have the, uh, the survey down below. Uh, laser 101 is the best place to go find your laser certificates, your laser safety courses, free projects, and my favorite thing, the material test. Oh, I know you love it. I love the material test. It's the best way to dial it in. So if you're looking for suggested settings on uh, uh, what to cut and mark your materials with, that's all there on the page with a nice test to uh, get your uh, uh, specific material dialed in. Uh, for your Especially application. Great for like photo rasters, right? Absolutely. And we're actually going to go through um, and do a 
little webinar about how to prep photos the best uh, for photo engraving and then what things to consider when doing engravings with your laser. And that'll be for both the Muse and Pro Series lasers. So look for that in the near future um, webinar for photo, um, I guess, prepping, right? Prepping your photo. Prepping the photo. Because really any photo will engrave, but like uh, your photo having high contrast, definitive lines, and really balanced uh, black and whites, really important. Specific materials too. Absolutely. So the material that you use is very, very, very important. But we'll probably stick with like general materials um, and then talk about the difference. Like when you go from like a wood doing a wood engraving and then like a granite to like how DPI yeah. and other things uh, come into play. So look for that in the future. Um, other than that, Friday, we got a barrel full of fun to have uh, on the project. Scott and uh, Walker and Charles will have that project for you on Friday. And then what are we doing tomorrow for In the Cut? What are we doing? What are we doing, Scott? Barrel. We are we cutting the barrel? So five. <coughs> um, well, tomorrow at 4 o'clock, we're going to have a very interesting <laughs> laser example for you to watch, and we're going to let you know just before it happens yeah. what it is. Um, I think we were going to do the fiber, but then we weren't sure if Frankie was going to have a minute. Oh, yeah. uh, so then it yeah, will probably be cutting out this barrel of monkeys, oh. though. <laughs> <laughs> we'll squeeze that no in. Um, once again, though, uh, a lot of the things we talked about today, those projects are available back on Laser 101, like learning how to make lifelike uh, images of yourself into characters you can play yeah. on. Just like, the, just like me. I mean, I mean, that's what I see when I look in the mirror, kind of like Shallow Hal. Oh, that's <laughs> it's like, oh, jeez. Um, anyway, uh, so look for those projects back on our previous uh, live projects. Uh, look for Scott, Walker, and Charles on Friday, uh, showing you how to put it together. And I guess until next time. Keep making. <laughs>